So this is, the, verse, verse 11 is unbelievable that this guy would do this to Tamar. You know, this is, in, uh, you know, to maybe kind of tie in an application for us today, uh, this, this is like a husband who just abandons his responsibility to his wife and kids and, and makes no provision for them. You know, just, just leaves and leaves them with nothing. You know, or, or, a, or a parent maybe who just puts a kid out that's not even an adult yet or something. You know, it's just, it, it's mind-boggling that he would do this. And just, you know, now he's, gonna, he's, just, he's just leaving her and handing her over to just a life of destitution, putting her in a really tough spot. And so verse 12 now, in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died, and Judah was comforted, meaning he mourned for his wife. And then he went up to his sheep shears in Timnah, and his friend Hira the Adulamite uh, was with him. Verse 13, it was told Tamar, saying, look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear sheep. Verse 14, so she took off her widow's garments, she covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and she sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah, for she saw that Sheila was grown and she was not given to him as a wife. So she waits uh, and can, remains a widow, expecting to marry Sheila. And time goes by, years, I suppose, go by until Sheila is old enough to, to marry. And she realizes now that Judah doesn't intend to give her to Sheila. And so she hears that he's going up to a place called Timnah uh, to shear his sheep. Now, sheep shearing time was, was like, it was like the one payday of the year for a shepherd. This is when the big windfall comes. This is what you've been waiting for all year. So it's a time of great celebration. And Tamar, again, she hears that her father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she dresses as a prostitute and waits for her father-in-law Judah along the roadside. She, she, again, she realizes Judah's not going to give her to her, his last son, Judah. She's a widow. She's got no provision for herself. Judah's neglect and abandonment has put Tamar in, the, in, in just dire circumstances. Now, that's not to say that she's justified in engaging in prostitution, but she thinks that this is her best option at this point. Because of what... Judah has done to her. He's put her in this situation. It's interesting that she knows her father-in-law is so morally bankrupt that he would visit a prostitute. Again, it says a lot about Judah's character. So verse 15, when Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. Now, I want you to look back at verse 12. Judah is making this journey with his buddy Hira the Adulamite. He's not traveling alone. He is, he's with Hira the Adulamite when he stops to proposition what he thinks is a prostitute. If, if, you, have, if you have friends in your life that, are, that you're comfortable sinning with, you need to get new friends. If, if you have friends in your life that, that you can just freely sin and they don't say anything to you about it, or they actually help you with it, you need to get new friends. You want friends that encourage you to follow Christ, to live for his glory and exhort you to love and good works. So verse 16, he, he turned to her by the way and said, please let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. So she said, what will you give me that you may come into me? So they negotiate a price here. And he said, well, I'll send you a young goat from the flock. So she said, will you give me a pledge till you send it? Then he said, well, what pledge shall I give you? And so she said, your, your signet and cord and your staff that is in your hand. And then he gave them to her and went into her and she conceived. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. So they, they negotiate a price and note here that Judah gives her his signet and cord and his staff as a pledge. Uh, again, those things aren't very meaningful to us, 
But for somebody who understands what those are, is living in this time and they're reading it, what? They're going to write what in the margin in their Bible next to this verse here. Judah used his signet ring or his signet to, to seal documents. The signet was on a cord. He would wear it as a necklace. And so she, she asked for his signet and his cord. This is, this, is, uh, this is one of Judah's most prized and valuable possessions. It represents his identity, the signet. And the staff here, when she asked for the staff also, this is not just some walking stick that he picked up along the roadside. The staff, it, it was the staff that designated Judah as the head of the family. The staff represents his authority and position as the head. If you're taking notes, you can jot down Numbers chapter 17, verse 2. We don't have time to look at it now, but you can look at it later. And and Judah hands these things over to a woman he meets on the street corner in exchange for just a few minutes of pleasure. His most valuable possession, his identity, And the symbol of his authority and position. He doesn't hesitate to hand them over to this woman. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 26 says, A harlot can reduce a man to a crust of bread. And that's what you see here. It's incredible what we will hand over for sin especially sexual sin. We will hand over our most valuable and prized possessions. We'll hand over our identity. We'll we'll hand over who we are as a person. We'll hand over our marriage. We'll hand over our family. We'll hand over our reputation. We'll hand over our career. We'll hand over our friendships, our relationships, our household for sin. This makes me so thankful for Jesus Christ. Because all of us have handed over something to sin. And I'm so thankful For Jesus Christ who sets us free from our bondage to sin through the cross. So that we no longer have to be slaves to sin. And he sets us free and he restores back to us all the things that we gave away for nothing. All the things that we lost and he makes all things new for us.